We've come to the time of our message. Uh, Hayden read the scripture for us, did a great job, and now it's our turn to kind of get now into the Word of God. And that's just a reminder that if you have your Bible app handy, uh, pull that out, get ready to go. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 1 uh, today. And uh, if you have your Bible, you can pull that out as well. I know that some of you are comfortable uh, marking in your Bible, and there could be some words or phrases that you want to highlight there or maybe underline. So I encourage you to do that. And again, just my invitation to you to make sure you take the time to invite a friend or a family member or a neighbor, coworker, classmate, someone to join in listening with you in the message and in our worship. So we're ready to go. I, I want to begin with a, a question. And the question is, has fear ever grabbed hold of your heart? Has fear ever grabbed hold of your heart? And, and it could be in kind of any situation, uh, any circumstance. But if so, could you just let us know in the comment section in some way or, or uh, send a signal up, you know, a cloud of smoke. Just let us know if fear has ever grabbed hold of your heart. Well, we just come past Christmas just a, a couple of days ago. In fact, I know that some families are celebrating their Christmas gatherings with family right now this weekend. What I know is that our Christmas celebrations have a way of bringing out not only a, a lot of joy, but also a great deal of fear. Many gather around the Christmas tree with more fear than excitement. They fear the person they most want to impress will not like their gift. Many gather around the Christmas dinner table with more fear than joy. They fear the topic will be brought up once again. And, and many gather around for Christmas Eve worship with more fear than in anticipation. They fear a message that is boring or irrelevant or even judgmental. Fear has a way of being a part of our Christmas celebrations. But what I, I want you to think about is that fear has been a part of every Christmas celebration since the very first Christmas. Mary and Joseph were engaged to be married. Everything was good for them. Both of their families were supportive and had given them an initial blessing upon their coming marriage. Joseph was a hard-working man who was supportive and loving. Mary was a trusting woman who loved the Lord with all of her heart and was totally devoted to Joseph. It's the kind of loving relationship we all desire. And then the Lord God starts sending angels to deliver messages. An angel comes to Mary's cousin's husband, Zechariah. At first, Zechariah is filled with fear. And then an angel comes to Mary. And at first, Mary is filled with fear. An angel comes to Joseph. And at first, Joseph is filled with fear. Christmas reminds us that when the Lord God speaks to us, when an angel delivers a message to us, or when the Holy Spirit nudges us, we are often overwhelmed. We are overwhelmed with God's glory all around us. We are overwhelmed with God's confidence in us. We are overwhelmed with God's love for us. We quickly move from being overwhelmed with our awesome wonderful, great God to being afraid. When Joseph learns that Mary is pregnant, he's afraid. They're not yet married, so the potential for public disgrace and embarrassment is very high. Questions begin to race through Joseph's mind. And that's what fear often does, is it, it causes uncertainty and doubt and lots of questions. Did Mary have an affair? Well, that's kind of scary to think about. Should he break off the engagement? Well, that creates some anxiety. What will her parents think? What will his parents think? 
wow, there's some apprehension. What will he say? What will he do? He's overwhelmed. Fear is all around. The good news is that the Lord God understands Joseph's fear. He also understands our fear. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, we hear, An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The word of God for Joseph, is very clear. Joseph, don't be afraid. I'm doing something here. This was the very same message the angel spoke to the shepherds on the night that Jesus was born. You can look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 9, and there we hear, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The Lord God understands our fear when he is doing something new, even if that new thing is very, very good. In the next two verses of Luke chapter 2, we hear a word of assurance, a word of comfort from God. Luke says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. One of the things that we learn from the first Christmas story is that fear seems to be pretty normal. And it's pretty normal for people like you and me too, especially when we sense that God is doing something new. When we hear the word of God or encounter an angel's presence or are touched by the healing of Jesus or maybe even filled with the Holy Spirit, we oftentimes respond with fear. One of the most frequent messages we hear from God in the Bible is this, do not be afraid. Most of the time that we hear these words, we also hear God's promise for us. Hear this. Most of the time that God says, do not be afraid, God also gives us a promise. It's an amazing. Don't be afraid, Zachariah. Your wife will have a baby next year. Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. Don't be afraid, Joseph. Mary's baby is the son of God. Don't be afraid, shepherds. A Savior is born tonight. Don't be afraid, troubled one. The Lord God is with you. The Lord God is with you. In Psalm uh, 23, verse 4, we hear God's promise. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. And then in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, we hear God's promise. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 31, we hear this promise from Jesus. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And then in Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus promises again, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. You see, even Jesus understands that fear can grab hold of anyone at any time. Zechariah was a pastor, and yet he was afraid. Mary was a devout lover of God, and yet she was afraid. Joseph was a man of God, and yet he was afraid. The shepherds witnessed the miracles of God's creation every day, and yet they were afraid. And then there's you and me. Sometimes fear grabs hold of our hearts. Yes, we know in our head that Jesus loves us and is with us. 
that sometimes that promise is not quite enough. That fear grabs hold of us and, and, and we often respond by doing dumb stuff or doing nothing at all. It's a re- reminder that my fear in my circumstances is the enemy of my faith in Jesus. The good news is the Lord God has a promise for you and me. It's the promise of Christmas. You see, one of the most frequent messages from the angels, from the very throne room of God, and and, and from the very lips of our Savior Jesus, is do not be afraid. The angel tells Joseph that he and we no longer need to be afraid because the birth of the Son of God means God is with us. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And there we hear the angel's promise. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The birth of Emmanuel means our fear no longer has to win the victory. The birth of the Savior means our anxiety no longer has to wreck a special moment. The birth of the Messiah means our disappointment no longer has to conquer our joy. The birth of the Lord Jesus means our dis-ease no longer has to destroy God's dream for our lives. Zechariah, do not be afraid. Mary, do not be afraid. Joseph, do not be afraid. Shepherds, do not be afraid. Children of God. Do not be afraid. This is time to flush away the fear, the anxiety, and the worry. It's time to flush away the apprehension, the fretting, and the, and the burden. It's time to flush away the stewing, the fussing, and the obsessing. You see, the good news of the Christmas gospel is that we can choose something different than fear. We can choose to place our faith in the Savior who was born in Bethlehem to be with us in every moment of every day. And that Savior makes a promise to us. In John chapter 14, verse 27, we hear this promise of Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. There's an alternative to your fear. We can choose to trust Jesus with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul and to live in His peace with the assurance of His love in the infilling of his joy. So I invite you today to flush the fear away and embrace a deeper faith in the Son of God, whose name is Jesus, who we know as Emmanuel, God with us. Let us pray. Jesus, you were born for us so that we don't have to live with anxiety and apprehension and fear. That in fact we can live lives filled with your peace, your love, your joy. To live lives that are filled with hope, not only for today, but for the future too. It's because you've come to be God with us. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We thank you that you've given your life and that you died. And that you live again with us and in us. 
But Jesus, I know too that there are many, many people who are living with some degree of fear. It might have to do with a job situation. Maybe it's a a job transition. It could be a promotion. It could be a reassignment. It could be a loss. It could be some kind of supervisory action, but there's anxiety and there's apprehension and there's fear there. Jesus, take those person's hand and walk with them. I know, Jesus, that for some, it's a health concern today. For, for, for themselves or maybe for someone they care about very deeply. And maybe it's just the initial diagnosis. Maybe it's a recent report that a therapy is not working very well. There it is again. The fear bubbling up. The fear grabbing hold of our heart. The fear taking control of our life. I pray, dear Jesus, for those persons that you would take them by the hand and walk with them. Walk with them. For some, Jesus, the fear has to do with a relationship. Maybe there's that, that anxiety, that, that almost excitement about, wow, is this, is this relationship going to go to the next level? I mean, is it going to go from where it is now, and is it going to go deeper and closer? And there's some apprehension about that. For others, it's a relationship that maybe has blown apart. And now it's picking up the pieces and trying to figure out what life is going to look like with that relationship gone. And for others, it's the anxiety, the fear of singleness. The 83-year-old woman, single, after 60 years of marriage. There's some fear in that. But there's also fear for the 29-year-old young man who's never been married but would like to find a soulmate. There's fear. Jesus, would you walk with each one where relationships are strained or stressed or not quite yet and take them by the hand and walk with them. And then, Jesus, there's the fear that comes when you make your presence known, when you make your power known. And we're not sure that we're strong enough or courageous enough to trust you and to obey you. And so we hold back. We hold back in fear. Even when you are drawing us closer to your heart, and into your dream for our life. Take us by the hand and walk with us. Jesus, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Help us to flush away the fear and to embrace faith in you. We ask it in your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen.